West Coast Mill Blogger. Your latest news on the conflicts around the world shaping our reality. Hello, West Coast Mill Blogger fans. Last week, you might have seen our first attempt to record a vlog. While it's true I have worked in television, I'm not used to being on camera. I'm only a producer. Ironically, it's working in radio that saw me on film the most. This transition from blogging to scripting a blog has admittedly changed the tone of my writing. Hopefully, it can become more of a blending of styles. My hope for recording a blog would be to get millions of subscribers in order to monetize and work from home. The reality of my blog is a natural transition for from A to Z's media. In this context, one can see it would be best to pay an actor to read the company's scripts, since going bankrupt, though, there are enough shillings in the conference at this time. However, it is growth toward more inspiring content goals in the pipeline. There are two audiobooks to be recorded, a movie script to be written, and a stand blog contest, too, to be compiled. This, in addition to From A to Z's weekly crypto blog series, now available on Vocal and Amazon. Now you can see where this vlog fits in. With this week's introduction complete, I'll try getting back on track to deliver a dose of conflict knowledge around the world. Gaza has left the news cycle. There's not much reporting going on there recently. No one seems to notice much either. It's too complicated because it can directly affect your life if you're not careful. Moving on, not much to report about Houthis in the Red Sea either. Funny thing is, as the Middle East conflict reaches peak, China and Russia began to get pulled in. With their influence in our media, it could be another reason why we don't hear much these days. The Middle East being in the middle of the world is accustomed to being the center of attention. I'm a witness of the overlap from Ukraine to Gaza coverage, meaning rewind the tape. To see how the comparison of these relatively nearby conflicts has caused the latter to influence the former. We continue in the aftermath of the peak performance at a Moscow concert hall. Russia and Ukraine try to continue as normal, while the branding assigned to these countries has gotten puzzling. At first, it felt like rallying for freedom. Now, it's an arms development scam with workers who sacrifice their lives every day for the advancement of weapons systems. Once again, let's remember President Biden and former President Trump both had connections to Ukraine before becoming president. We've seen a shift from wasting money in Afghanistan to wasting money in Ukraine. At a time when a hemp-based economy could have taken root to make America great again after prohibition, yet that wasn't the trump card that got played. Instead, a global pandemic for big pharma companies, and when hemp was proven scientifically to hinder the ability of coronavirus to attach to cells in the body, it became misinformation. Then, soon after dramatic change in political leadership, New vaccines arrived at warp speed to be forced inside our bodies. Now we keep hearing about the side effects. The point being, two, Putin 2.0 has now committed a 9-11. He has torn a page from President Bush's playbook, only he's being upfront about it. While Bush never gave in to conspiracy theories, this last, this last week Putin 2.0 showed us his hand. Not only did he give in to intelligence, placing the blame on ISIS, he let the world know. He knew beforehand about the attack. So the Russians knew about the attack and they let the attack happen. We can only speculate about the reasons. We're also seeing the Russians make a push in Ukraine. It's a center stage now without any news from the Middle East. Only that Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and United Arab Emirates are building future cities. Could it be the quiet before the terrorist storm meant to hit deep inside Russia as Islamist prisoners are put on a one-way train to Siberia? Maybe that's why Putin to Buena wants a death penalty trial in Belarus. People on the West Coast were never meant to learn about how the old world operates. We can all blame the internet, especially for the information released this last week by YouTube channel Real Life War and covered again by YouTuber Jake Pro. The French are at war with the Russians. A secret French empire kept in place across Africa has collapsed. While we've covered Wagner in Africa before, we were unaware of the depth of dependence France has for these African colonies, now waging wars of independence with help from Russia. It is its realization allowing us to see France's willingness to now send troops to Ukraine. While it might spark a NATO Russia war, it could also help France keep its dignity after the humiliation of expulsion from former puppet states 
just wait until next week. Thank you.